Alrighty, I got something that's a little bit locked. I don't, you know, I have some forms. I've got a window. I got a big engine. I got a exhaust. I've got some kind of jet. I've got some kind of seat with some kind of instrument panel. You know, it, I've just got something. Now is when you your brain needs to change a little. So, how are we going to start to create something that's much more of a mech? item here. What would be the process or the tools that you would use to start to make this hard surface? Because right now it's quite organic, right? This is the same as grabbing a bunch of clay and you know you just threw it in and, and sketched out the shape. What are the tools that I use to refine the form now? That's the question I want in your mind. And I'll present you a couple of options. The option I'm going to present right now is the one that's most likely to come to mind, which is H polish, polish brush, uh, trim dynamic, um, and other brush-based systems. So let's do that real quick, and I'm gonna I'm gonna duplicate this. Uh, let's work on that duplicate. So uh, trim dynamic is set to four, so I can say try to get a round surface here. Um, a round surface there. I can switch over to H polish and I'll be like, well, I really want to get a nice clean hard edge in here. And uh, that'll help me really smooth out this area. Maybe I can get, but notice what's happening. As I do this, it's the brush is really kind of forcing these planes. The planes are kind of messing with my my sketch. So this is really, you know, screwing up the the flow I had going there. What is uh, uh, Jeff Bridges say in Tron? You know, you're, you're just really messing with, uh, you know, my vibe. And so what we need to do is take another tack. We need to find another direction. And uh, that direction is going to be that we start to use masks which go to groups. And then from groups, as soon as we have this grouped, then we have a whole bunch of cool stuff that happens, like polish by feature, right? And also panel loops. And we already saw panel loops is pretty awesome. it does a lot of polishing for us already. So we don't have to get in there and mess with all that stuff. The problem it has is that it separates out, if I can spell separate, damn it Jim, I'm an artist, uh, separates out the form. And in this area coming into here, I may not want that separated out. I'll want this bubble separated out, but I don't think I want that separated out. So that's going to be the battle we have. So let's get in there and start to create our individual pieces. And now we don't have to be terribly you know, meticulous about this. That's not that's not the way this flows. Let's say cut out a little piece there and I'm going to come in there. And uh, I want it to get there, but we let's make sure there's nothing up in this area. Okay. Control Shift E. All right. You know, it's messy. Da 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 da. da. But that's cool. Oh, that's not cool though. All right. So that's fine. Now let's get in. Uh, let's get this instrument panel. Control Shift E. I have a cool seat. Control Shift E. Can't do it. Okay, so Control Shift E. Uh, let's say. I'm going to just hide a part so I don't have to deal with the visibility issue later.
And then I can control shift E that. Control shift, sorry, control. Make sure perspective is off when you start doing that. I'm going to just mask out this entire circle. Ah, this would be a good demo for me. Control Shift E. Um, Control Shift E. Yeah, you know, it's a little painful, right? Let's see. Oops, don't do that. Ryan, turn Dynamesh off. Okay. And let's try something else. Control Shift. Uh, does this work with symmetry? No. So we've got to be a little careful, but we have this off. So let's come in and say, If I do this, it's going to go all the way through. Is that useful, though? It kind of is. What happens if I do the same here? Let me try that with another polygroup. Okay, I need to start hurrying, otherwise you guys are going to start to go to sleep on me. It's a little more complex of a project than I was supposed to do. Okay, Control shift e and then let's get this one. And let's turn this uh, mask by polygroup off. I'm going to switch over to select rectangle. And I'm going to hide these. Alt. Poly group, group visible. And there we go. That should be enough for me to demo what I need to demo right now. Let me check in um, with you guys here real quick. Let me see. Let me see. You're really messing with my Zen. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, you hide and group loop only visible. Mm, hide and group loop visible. Uh, Kathleen, what I was doing was uh, I was m working with the piece, masking, so I didn't have to deal with the edge. And then I could come in, show everything, and, and pull something out. Um, control shift versus control W. Uh, so Steve is asking why didn't I use why did I use control shift E versus control W? Um, let's do a quick demo. So control, let's just go here. Okay. So this is polygrouped, but it is not sliced as well. So that clean edge is why I would press control uh, shift 
E over just control W. That done and said, panel loop does this for you. So when you introduce that is, um, you know, it has some impact, uh, but I, as a, as a rule, just like to use slice. Okay, and why not add auto mask polygroup um, 100? I think that was on, uh, Matt. This is what you're referring to, auto mask, mask by polygroup 100. Um, but let me know if I misunderstood that. And Johannes, slice uh, mirror, but does not slice uh, through. Uh, so slice will basically go all the way through. So if we were operating from this perspective, if I sliced, it would kind of slice and repeat that all the way through. But it doesn't work with symmetry, like I, I do a circle here and it does a circle on the other side. Although, um, by the time you see this, that may or may not be rectified. Okay, uh, Kathleen, um, can you hide part of the model and only panel loop what's visible? So, let's say this and then I just want to select this guy here and then you would say want to press control shift E that doesn't work control W that does work okay focus Ryan there we go so I was able to use control uh, W to create a separate polygroup it did not slice though so that functionality is quite nice does that answer your question Kathleen Oh, Mads, yes, it was actually, it was on anyways, I, but it's my habit to kind of go through and do that. So, yes, you're right. Uh, let me rephrase with everybody what Mads is suggesting. So, when I'm masking out, you see all right now I'm masking out one group, two group, and three group. If you go into brush and you turn mask by polygroup on, then you only get one. And so that's a lot easier than doing what I was doing, which was hiding, da da da, and then showing. So two ways to do it, but uh, Mads is correct to point out that the easier way is just set your um, your uh, mask by polygroup on, and then you'll be in better shape. I'm going through the questions again. Uh, Michael, with polished group, mask gives a clean edge. Okay. And is it possible to delete an object from the group? Yes. Uh, Paul is asking, is it possible to delete an object from the group? Um, by that I mean, I'm assuming you mean, let's say you wanted to include all of this into one group. Is that correct, Paul? Okay. So how would I do that? You can select it you know there's a couple of roundabout ways but yes you can uh, so we could just kind of pull these guys all off so I press control shift and then I press alt and then I just group visible and there it's gone but as is being suggested if you have that auto mask all the way to a hundred then you get some cool behavior here so control W Control W, Control Shift E, you know, just to show you guys some variations. Um, now we're getting a lot more complicated with how these forms develop. Control W, okay, and shoot, Control W or Control Shift E. Up to you on how that works out. If you wanted to delete, um, then yeah, there's modified, you have to isolate something like, for example, if we wanted to delete this, all of these polygons, then we would control shift click them, click and drag, we go to geometry, modify, and we just say delete hidden. But we don't want to do anything like that, that's quite drastic for right now. 
Okay. So there's a lot of things, and you guys are seeing a lot of, uh, if you're watching this live, you'll see a lot of the comments um, people are giving for different options, how to do it. And it gives you a sense, because <laughs> I'm the one up here, I just went through a whole bunch of do this, do that, do this. There are a lot of variations of how to do these things, and there's a lot of these extra sliders, and adjust this slider to do this, and adjust that to do these things. Uh, and we're going to definitely be learning. Uh, I, I want you guys to learn all of that stuff, and that's it's really important when you're communicating it with students. This is how um, this makes this feature will improve your results here. But I also I also want to put one caveat in there, which is that if you're communicating this to somebody else, uh, all of these little features start to get really confusing. And um, I mean, I, I'm doing this live as as I'm recording this and interacting with you guys live, uh, and all of these sliders and all of these settings start to you know confuse me. And I've been doing this for eight plus years, so <laughs> there's a lot of little variables. But in my view, the most important thing for you uh, to communicate, and the most important thing for me to communicate is workflow and expectation. Okay. And that's where this workflow is about how do you use something that's rough like this and start to get in there and create something that has energy and has beautiful surfaces and things like that.